What's poppin' players? Welcome back to a Two Penny Games Cast review slash review in progress of Horizon Forbidden West. I am your host Tavin Bothell here with my good friend and co-host Connor Elliott. Say hello to the people, Connor. Hello again, Connor. As I just said, we've been playing Horizon Forbidden West. Mm -hmm. Neither of us have beaten the game no. uh, because we are tiny, tiny little internet trolls who you know play it uh, at launch with everybody else. I'm pick. I dropped my water bottle cap and now I'm picking it up with my foot like a monkey. Now you don't get. You know, now I'm a monkey. And you're going to put it on your lot bottle, too? Just no, I'm going to finish the water, and then I'll put it on. Oh, very respectable. Never mind. Though. Anyways, Connor, we've been playing Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, we made it about halfway through this review until I realized uh, I forgot to press record. So now we're starting over. This is a small red button. Yeah, <laughs> small red button. Did I do the same thing with the seafood review? I might have. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, you can catch a seafood review and this review over at youtube.com slash cast alongside... Uh, the Two Penny Games cast as a whole that is going up at Monday, 8 a.m. Central Time. You can see reviews for things like Uncharted and Halo and all those great things. But if talking about video games isn't enough, you want us to do gamer stuff and play video games, like playing Horizon Forbidden West with some footage that you're seeing right here, uh, which there should be no real spoilers in this. It should be all um, early footage game stuff, no real story arc or anything. I think I was playing around in the open world for like an hour. Um... And this is a few hours into the game because the it's very narrative focused up front, and then it and then it opens up a long goddamn time. It takes fucking open forever. World. Oh my god! Yeah. There, there are games smaller than that intro segment. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ! Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that, but it's all that, build up. It's all build up. It's all leading to your journey into the West. We got to learn um, mechanics like the zip line and the the pull casters. Yeah, you do. Uh, anyways, uh, I totally lost my train of thought, mm -hmm. Connor. You and I have both played Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, I played it at launch. You played it shortly after launch, dropped it, jumped back in, dropped it again, and then finished it in the last few months. And none of these are uh, speaking to the speaking. Uh, it's not about the quality of the game because I enjoyed every oh, yeah, time I picked just, it up. It you just, just fell off and yeah, came back yeah. and fell off. And so. It was the fact you kept coming back probably yeah. shows. I liked Horizon Zero Dawn a lot back in the day when it came out. I thought its uh, its world design was fantastic. I loved. Uh, the combat, I loved the feeling of hunting the machines and how each machine felt differently and you had to kind of figure out its behavior uh, and so forth and all that. I did think the story was um, – eventually got good when it started its dual narrative things but started out pretty rough. I thought its acting and its writing were pretty lackluster and mediocre. Um, and But it wasn't until about halfway through where it really grabbed my attention and I really fell in love with – uh, the, the, the story of Zero Dawn. Uh, and I think pretty much all of that is translating here uh, in Forbidden West one for one. I'm about 12 to 15 hours in. You are literally like one mission behind me. Yeah, I'm around the same run time. Yeah. Uh, about 13. And in those 12 to 15 hours, I have been desperately looking for a reason to continue playing. Mm -hmm. um, I like this game a lot. However, it is so painfully more Horizon Zero Dawn, but just a little better to the point to where I'm not feeling energized to pick it back up. I'm yeah. not I'm not excited to jump back into the world. I'm not speaking on the quality of the game here. It's just my own personal level of excitement. Yeah. I think the game plays just as great, if not better, than the original game. Uh, there are a lot of things that they've improved on. Some things could have used more improvement. But overall, like ev if you had a critique of the last game, it's been addressed here in some way. Mm -hmm. Better or worse, we'll get into that in a minute. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but overall, I think Horizon Forbidden West is another great uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, game from Guerrilla Studios and from PlayStation Studios as a whole. Yeah. It's difficult to do this, to make a new game and make it feel different. Yeah. But this feels the exact same, which admittedly is a little bit of a drawback because after so many years in development it's, and amping it up you would think it feel differently at the very least that's, and it, it's a hard conversation baseline. to have because it is more of what we wanted yeah but unfortunately it doesn't do anything more than just more of what we wanted you know what i mean so like mm -hmm. it, it it's just it's tough man it's real real tough for for i'm i'm just i'm so far i'm very conflicted about this game i felt the story was just as generic as it was in the beginning and i've only just hit the moment there, where the narrative takes a turn and mm -hmm. there's a there's a bit of a twist and now my ears are perked up and now it has energized me to pick up the controller and play more but i have elden ring now so i am coming back to horizon forbidden west at some point probably after our elden ring review uh next week but as of right now 
how far is that twist going to take me? Another five hours? Another 10 hours? Will it take me to credits? I don't know. In my head, I would, I would like to love this game and to play it all the way through and to platinum it and to feel great about it. But as of right now, like, I enjoyed Ghost of Tsushima more. Uh, but that's not fair because Ghost was giving me a new experience. Yeah. Whereas this one is giving me more of an experience I already spent 60 hours in, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, why would I want to spend another 60 hours in that same thing? I don't know. Um, now, some, some of the improvements of the game are connected to the combat. Yeah. Uh, there's new weapons. Yep. Uh, so All far, of which I've liked so far. Yeah, and they've kept the game, the so far at least, they've kept most of the weapons from the original game. Uh, the Rattler has been replaced for something called the uh, the Warrior's Bow, which is a lot better. It's a, it's a fast-firing bow that doesn't require you to pull back all the way to get maximum uh, damage out of it. Uh, you have the Javelin, which you saw Tavin throwing around earlier that explodes upon love impact. Love the Javelin. I love it, too. Javelin's yeah, it's great. One, probably the coolest addition to the uh, the weapon uh, roster in this game. Uh, Did you use the Buzzsaw thing yet? Oh, the cutter. No, I yeah, have the, the cutter. shredder cutter. Yeah, yeah I have not. Like Is it good? It's all right. I like it. Okay, good, good. Yeah. I used it once, so oh, like, really? I need to play I need to play with a little more with it, but it was cool. Okay. Uh, they also... They... Also, the stuff that I'm doing right here, this is an open world activity where you have to like... You're shown a picture and you have to match it up with the world and you have to look around and stuff. This is cool. Yeah. I like... This is the cool little environmental puzzle. You almost got it there. Like. There you go. You're going right. Yeah, I, I'm figuring... I, I, I've pieced it together. Yeah. I, oh, I gotta be over there. Yeah. Okay, great. But melee combat did see an improvement. So they added combos. Mm -hmm. They added a, a system where where you can string together light attacks and then go in for a heavy attack. Yep. And if you have uh, your spears glowing, you uh, get a point on them. Uh, what, do, what do they call it? A, some kind of... Well, it stuns them. It stuns and then, them and, it, them and then it opens up a point of vulnerability that if you then shoot an arrow at that point, it basically kills them. Yeah. And, you know, these things make it fresher. I liked the, the melee combat more than you did. I know in the past game, you only used it, it at a necessity. When it so, was necessary. Uh, but real quick, like, to, to feed into that, and, and what I think it is an improvement on this game is the uh, the upgrade tree. And while we're here with the footage right here, I'm going to just pause it. So you have your, your six upgrade trees, your warrior, trapper, hunter, survivor, infiltrator, machine master. All of these, just based off of the names alone, you can probably guess what they each focus on. Um, I have found myself focusing a lot in the hunter and infiltrator ca uh, categories. I don't know about you. Uh, and then I play around with the warrior and the survivor. I, I know I've gotten a few into Trapper just so that I could put more traps down because traps and tripwires are counted as the same thing and you can only put two down. Uh, that's a massive downgrade from the system where you could do basically what... You could just do whatever you want. You could have a whole playstyle built around traps, but yeah. now you can't. Yeah, now they, you kind of can't. And I, I looked into it. You, the max is four. Four? What? I used to, I used to like, litter the, the, the battlefield with tripwire casts, and then I would just run through. And now you can trip your own tripwires, which is kind of annoying. I don't know how I feel about it, but, like, yeah, I, it's, I, I, it's like a pros and cons thing in my mind where it's like, ah, I kind of liked it better that way. But, like, at the same time, it does make things more challenging, and, you know, I do have to think about my approach a little more. Yeah, but you know? at, at the core of it, you can only place so many down. It massive downgrade in my eyes. I might even get to the point where I don't even use it anymore. Because two, it's like, okay, you have to get them in it in the first place. You have to make sure that you don't get hit into it. Yeah. Also, it seems like it's a lot more stringent with how you place them. Like before, it's, it's like, if you put it on solid con uh, solid ground to solid ground, it's there. It's set up. And this one, I sometimes do it on a rock and then on the ground and then it'll fizzle out. And yeah, like, I think it's I think it's one of those things where the geometry is meeting each other that there there's a break somewhere there because yeah. I, I I was struggling with with that at first and then I I'm better now than I was. Yeah, I got used to it. It seems like a weapon that's already been downgraded this much and then you're just kind of it, It's a thing where I, I I only use it in moments where I know the machines are coming to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not me going to the machines. I almost never I'll just I just stealth attack things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um but then, like, I know the Machine Master. I don't even think I've even looked into that category yet because I just I don't, yeah. I don't care about hypnotizing machines. I'm yeah. just going to kill them all. I've stuck to the Warrior, Hunter, and uh, the Medicine User. Just the Medicine User? Survivor. No. Yeah, Survivor, yeah. Just because, you know, survivability is something I enjoy. Being yeah, you got to get that health up. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, almost, it's almost mandatory. But, yeah, yeah. instead of Warrior, I've been playing around in the Infiltrator tree more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which just makes sense with the two of our play styles. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and then I have found Hunter uh, like a, another mandatory necessary thing that you have to build into just because that's the one that focuses around your main bow and arrow thing. So you're like, all right, well, if I want cool bow and arrow powers, I got to I gotta use this, uh, yeah. including the thing of like 
notching multiple arrows at once. Like, uh, I was like, as soon as I found where that upgrade is, I was like, oh, I'm shooting for that one right now. I'm getting that one back immediately. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Just because arrows reminded me of it, I hate the way that crafting ammo is done in this game. Because before... It, it's the exact it, same. It, no, it doesn't, it doesn't seem the exact same. It seems it's like it's same. a lot slower. Like, it takes a lot longer to build ammo in combat and, you know... In I the don't first know. Horizon game, oh. I didn't feel like I, I would just hold it down and it would create it fast the same way regardless. Yeah. Now, I get the intention for it. Like, you know, you, don't, you want that to be a management. Some of those things are valuable and you don't want to be making mistakes. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing is that, like, in this game and in the last game, doing the crafting never seemed... I never... I always do it in a safe spot. So it seems like it's not even... An, like, it's just being slow for the sake of being slow. So mm. I'm just, like, holding down X longer... For the sake of holding an X longer. It doesn't I mean, bring an extra challenge to, to, to continue it that, I'm having the same... I'm having that issue, but with the looting. After uh, playing Ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. where you can just ride through on your horse and just mash the trigger and he'll pick up everything. Yeah. Now I'm having to stop. Like, even if it's something that is just a quick pickup and just a quick tap of the triangle button and I'm on my mount, the mount full stops. Yeah. So that Aloy can bend down and pick it up and... Uh, or most of the time, you have to hold triangle to open it up for some reason and then just loot anything, everything anyway. I don't know about you, I've never not been in a position, especially now that, like, when your inventory does max out, it doesn't just stop you like it did in the last game. Yeah. It now sends everything to your stash back at uh, the nearest town or whatever. So now it's like, why would I ever not loot everything? Yeah. You know? Which why is a good you... thing. That's a good, I, I think that's a good thing. I don't, I don't like how it pigeonholed you. So into, why do I have to inventory? hold a button to then press another button to do it? Just press the button and give me what I can and send the rest to my stash. And yep. that's it. Like, I don't... And, and it's the it's the animations of, like, she just went through and picked up some trees and uh, for, and branches and stuff. It's just... You're stopping me every moment. Every yep. moment. Every moment. I, it's just a little bit of hindrance. And I think it's, it's because everything is based in animations. I have the same issue with... Uh, you just saw it with the little grappling hook. I believe it's called the uh, the pull caster, mm -hmm. where they use this for environmental puzzles and for traversal and stuff like that to get around and to climb things faster and so forth. I like it on paper. I think it looks cool. The animation is cool, but it, again, the animations are so stiff and so like you have to you have to go to this one spot, and then when you hit that spot, Aloy has to finish her animation of grabbing onto the rock before you can move or before you can jump off or before you can drop yeah uh, they even put it into where like uh, you pull yourself forward and then you press circle to do a quick jump up uh but again aloy has to finish her animation sit on the thing and then even if you pressed it like three seconds ago then she jumps up and it's like mm, why couldn't we just have her just bounce off the wall immediately. Like, nobody's going to ask any questions in an open-world game like this. Yeah, there's a ton of things in this game that really do just slow down the game. I mean, you have mentioned in the past you don't like scanning things. No. Focusing, the detective mode, and, which and, you have to do a lot in this game. And, you know, excuse the pun, but the hyper-focus on the focus in this one is driving me up the wall. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fact that I have to, like, I don't remember a thousand percent how scanning worked for uh, uh, machines in the last game, but it was probably pretty similar to how it is. Here. You just turn on the scan. You pressed R one. I think it would put you in that state of where. You All right, we're here. Things. It's like you just you hold the stick for a little bit and you do that. And for scanning for scanning machines, that works fine. And for um, like scanning the environment, it works fine. But it it's just so painfully slow. Like, mm -hmm. and I hate scanning the environment. I hate it. I it's never fun. Mm -hmm. It's the the Batman detective vision is never fun outside of Batman. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> Uh, like, it wasn't super fun in The Witcher 3, but Witcher 3 was a lot faster. So, like, it was more forgivable. Yeah. Um, here, it's just, like, everything feels so slow because we have to wait on these animations for fucking ever. Um, and I'm also having an issue where, like, if I'm not standing in the exact right spot, it won't give me the prompt to press triangle. So then I'm like, you know, and I'm just having, like, these... Th it's just all these tiny, tiny little issues that I was hoping wouldn't be here that are here. And... It makes the entire game design feel archaic, mm -hmm. especially after games like The Witcher 3 and Breath of the Wild and even PlayStation Studios' own Ghost of Tsushima, where mm, the flow of Ghost... I had cr minor critiques of Ghost of Tsushima, and there, there were some things in that game that I... Uh, if if they're still there in the next game, I'm going to harp on just as hard. Um, like, the climbing and traversal. If, if the climbing in Ghost of Tsushima 2 still sucks... I'm going to fucking rail on it mm -hmm. because it was so bad in that game. And it was bad. And the climbing wasn't great in Zero Dawn. I liked it better uh, than what we had in Ghost. But, like, 
and it's improved here. This is the best of the three, but it's still not great because it's a lot of, all right, scan, shoot out the yeah. thing. Everything lights up yellow or red or whatever. Like you can climb on the yellow bits that are handholds that you couldn't see with the naked eye. Um, and it's just like, yo, this all just feels slow. And she, Aloy does not climb fast. No. For, for as much of like climbing traversal that they're aping from Uncharted, boy, does Nathan Drake run up them walls real quick. Maybe we should do that here, guys. Also, she, whenever she do things about the climbing, whenever she jumps on an object, and certain games do this, and it makes me so upset, when they try to make it realistic, because there's no other reason to do this, yeah. where they like struggle, like, oh, I just jumped on an object from somewhere else, okay. gotta get my balance. Again, Uncharted does this too, but it works in Uncharted, because it's at set points, like, where, like, the, the piece crumbles away underneath him yeah. or something. Here... She just kind of like she only got it with one hand, so she just kind of like dangles there for a second and then picks herself back yeah. up. I'm like, though I gotta admit, I hate when Uncharted does that too. That's probably my least favorite thing about the Uncharted games. Uh, it's traversal. Uh, I think uh, because roadblocks. I think because Uncharted is so cinematically driven and it's so and it's a linear game, so they mm -hmm. can focus on those moments more. And the presentation and the execution on it is of a high fidelity. It doesn't bother me. Uh, but when it's like clearly like hey, this animation doesn't work with our game engine, but we want it to look like Uncharted, so we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, That's when it bothers me. Mm -hmm. Also, the climbing, you have to scan for the points to grab onto, and they could be very hard to spot because they're just, you know, little... Without the scanning, you can't tell they're there, so you have no, to use yeah. the scanning. And you can turn it on an accessibility feature to just make that always be there so you don't even have to scan. Oh, my God, I'm turning that yeah, on. Yeah, because the process of scanning where you need to climb... It's kind of a waste. I, I, I honestly way, way liked the first game's uh, use of that, where even though it was obvious where you needed to climb, good. I don't and need it was, to know, it, find it, out. But, like, there was also, like, a lot of, like, in the first game of, like, oh, I can jump over this. Oh, I can't jump over it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling that here. Like, if there's something I can jump over, or I feel like I can jump over, more times than not, I can jump over it. Um, what are you doing in here, Tavin? Just looking mm -hmm. over your weapons? Anyways. Um... It, it, dude, it sounds like we're coming off super negative, but these are just like, these are just the nitpicks of a game that we want to yeah. love. Admittedly, there are a lot of nitpicks, and they're nitpicks that slow down the pace of the game, which is yeah. a big issue. But as far as every, all the pieces coming together, as mm -hmm. we said, the gameplay, the story, which we haven't super even touched quality, on yet, super quality, game. very high quality. Yeah. Yes, uh, and improvements to things like uh, the motion of the characters, facial mm -hmm. motion specifically, and even mannerisms is a lot more improved. Oh, as yeah. well as the voice actors. Presentation as a whole has, has been increased here. The acting is better here, though I still think often falls flat. Mm -hmm. I think the choice of having a dialogue wheel hurts um, a lot. I felt that that way in the last game. I didn't like... I've never felt that the dialogue wheel was necessary in these games. Um, and I think it actually hinders Ashley Birch's performance because... I feel like she never has a good grip on the character. Are we? Re we're not repeating ourselves, right? I'm trying not to. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're okay. Not. No, I just no, got. No, we're no, just no, not. No, you know. No, we're just no. letting it flow because we did it. We had this conversation, and then halfway through, we were like, "Fuck, yeah. we gotta have it again." Yeah, I know. So you, you gotta. Re you no, know what you said. I feel like Ashley Birch does not have a strong grasp over the character of Aloy. Like I've seen her have strong grasps over characters before, and I think the huge amount of RPG level dialogue wheels and all this stuff is hindering her performance, and I think it's because also Gorilla doesn't care about performance as much as other game studios like Naughty Dog or like uh, uh, Santa Monica or even the Life is Strange guys, uh, which she is in those games, and I think she delivers a better performance in those games than here. Ghost of Tsushima had more gr a more gripping narrative and character uh, development than this game, and, and that's kind of what's holding me back from like loving it and to the point to where I don't even know if I'm going to finish this game because... I don't care about these characters. Like, I don't care about this story. I don't. You know, like, her, she has her little ensemble of returning characters. I care about one. Who's that? Varl. I like Aaron. I like Varl, too, but... Aaron, Aaron bothers me. Aaron, Aaron's one of those characters, like, from the last game that I didn't like his performance know, in the man. last game. He is better in this one, but, like, it's still, like... He's still, like, there. Like, mm -hmm. he's, like, um... Uh, what's the character? Foggy in the Daredevil Netflix show, where the actor was, like pretty ugh. and so like it kind of just killed that whole character for me so any foggy centric episodes i was like i don't care mm -hmm. man i know i should because it's daredevil's best friend but i'd be much more happier mm -hmm. if we were just focusing on daredevil mm -hmm. right now that's how i feel about uh Aaron. uh but i do like varl and again i'm a, believe i'm a little yeah i'm a little further than you so like they're doing things with him that um 
we did, we just didn't see a focus on mm-hmm. side characters like that in the last game that they're doing in this one that I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's interesting. These are characters who have lives that form relationships with all kinds of people and stuff. And I'm like, this is really, really, really cool and really yeah. interesting, and I really like this. Which, if we're talking about characters we like, one character I actually have a fondness for, pretty strong, strong fondness for, is Silence. He oh oh I do like silence. He's an asshole. Though. Oh, he's a, he's, he's a dick. Yeah, from, and returning and from you last can game, feel the frustration Aloy has with dealing with him because he is he does things that he doesn't need to do, but yeah. because of his nature, he does them. Oh, it's and it just it's totally off. selfish. Yeah, it's totally it's, selfish. It, and meeting with the opposite of that, which is Aloy, who is mm-hmm. just this golden child who I can't, I can't relate to her because uh-huh. she's just this fucking golden child, always do the right thing type character, and it drives me up the fucking wall. Um, but. You're right. When she is met with silence and she gets so frustrated so quickly because she's like, why? Why are you choosing to do this? Because silence often is like, yeah, we're after the same thing. It's just I'm better than you. I'm better than you. (laughs) And and it's like, okay, then serve me. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to lead you on the breadcrumb trail. Yeah. For you to find out yourself. He's like, Aloy, we need to be smarter about this. (laughs) So we're going to go the long way till you figure out how to be smarter about it. And I'm like, this is great. Their interactions are great, but it's just like – when Aloy is talking to random NPCs, where I'm like, I tune out and yeah, I'm, I'm gone, true. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, to the point to where like, I think the dialogue wheel is pretty like, I keep harping on it, but like, mm-hmm. it's so unnecessary because it's literally just, do you want these characters with bad voice actors to keep mm-hmm. talking or not? And more times than not, I'm like, nah, I'm cool. This conversation can end, which is something I never do in video games. I am the exhaust every dialogue option guy Mm -hmm. that's me like mass effect on my seventh playthrough Mm -hmm. i still ask questions about the politics of the fucking citadel yeah i know them already but i enjoy getting the lore and the backstory and all that i don't care here i don't care i'm also the kind of guy that likes to exhaust dialogue and i still do in this game but i definitely am like okay i use my uh i i read very fast i'm a good reader so I just like <laughs> so you're just reading the information yeah. and skipping like, okay. the blind. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good. I know everything now. So it's 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 yeah. It kind of just it's not really. I don't have too big of an issue with the dialogue wheel itself because I don't mind clicking on those those extra dialogue options to find out more things. But yeah. it definitely isn't very uh, interesting. No, yeah, on his own. no, not at all. And I I just I think the writing has uh, is not where it needs to be again in this game where mm-hmm. like. Sure, your story is interesting, but your character dialogue is not. So mm-hmm. I find myself just tuning out whenever your characters are talking. And then I get lost in the story and I stop caring. You know? Like, and... Sure, I had this problem in Zero Dawn, but they had their they had their narrative twist in Zero Dawn, which re-engaged me. And the twist they've had here, I think, is quite twisty. It's mm-hmm. quite a twisty twist. Um, but is it enough to keep me going? I don't know. Because... I know I know how this world works now. Yeah. Nothing is new now. Uh even though this twisty is this twisty twist. It's mm-hmm. a very twisty twist, Connor. Um is reinvigorating me a little bit, but how much is that going to do? The dual narrative thing they were doing in the first game carried me all the way to the end. Uh what they what they are doing here will carry me probably another 5 to 10 hours. And then it is dependent upon the level of quality of writing from right. there to get me to continue and, you know, if any new gameplay things open up. Which makes this difficult, because even though we are 15 hours in, and we should be able to talk about this game in a review space, does this game change at hour 20? It, 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 is suddenly there's a new breath of fresh air uh, in this? I don't know. Um, I do know that because of the timing of when the last game was released in proximity to Breath of the Wild, this game often gets compared to Breath of the Wild, which I've always felt was unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, and when in the lead up to this game, it was like, oh, hey, man, uh, I'd love to see what the influence of Breath of the Wild did to the sequel. And it's there with the glider and the climbing, you know, a little bit, um, which the glider works fine. It does. The glider is functional. Get you down from high spots I don't faster. Like, let me just let me get on my little milk crate real mm-hmm. quick, okay? Let me get on my little, my little stand. <laughs> You've been able to glide in video games for decades. Decades we've had this technology. Just because Breath of the Wild popularized it to a fucking stupid degree doesn't mean they did it. Assassin's Creed 2 did it. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood did it. Sly Cooper did it. Like, the, the PS2 generation games did it. Did Shadow of the Colossus do it? No, it didn't. So never mind. No. I, I retract that, well, that part. But Sly Cooper did this 20 years ago. 
on on this very 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 niche Legend of topic Zelda to have. Wind Waker did it. Yeah, they did. They had the leaf. Whee! That was a fun game. Uh, I've never played. I don't know why you don't. Why do you have to hold down square to glide? Wouldn't it be just easier to just click it when you're in the air? Didn't you hold it in Breath of the Wild? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember. remember either. I don't think you did. It might have been just a click in Breath of the Wild. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Why do I have to hold it? Yeah, don't, just don't let me deploy. let me press it and yeah. have her pull it out. Which kind of leads into the whole thing of like it slows down things because why do I have to hold the button so much? Yeah, that that's my thing. Is like this sounds like a dumb critique. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, like, it's a nitpick critique, but it's the fact that it's an open world game, so I have to do this and watch a bar fill up thousands and thousands and thousands of times to the point where it's just like, motherfucker, I already jumped. I already jumped off the cliff. Yeah. I'm either going to pull the glider out or I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. There's no other options here. Like, let me just pull the glider out, goddammit. <sighs> Ugh, and I do wish the pull the pull caster. I do wish I could do that to anything. I wish it wasn't set points. I wish I could just climb up things. I understand That'd that would be really, hard to do. That that would be hard to do. And they're taking a more cinematic and story driven focus on this as opposed to a Breath of the Wild oh, pull cat. Oh, I, the gra- like the grappling mechanic of it, not the pulling objects. Yes. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I wish I could just look at a rock and shoot and. Oh, oh that rock. yeah. Okay, yes. so I had I had you right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they should just do it. At the very least, though, they could have done it more. They didn't. They, they didn't have to be as yeah, staring as they 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 were. Have been so far, at least. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just. God, we sound like we're coming off so negative, but that's because like, what can we say about the combat? It's the same from the first game. It was great in the first game. It's great here. It really is. Yeah. It does feel good to hunt these, uh, machines, and the new machines are all great and fun to learn. And uh, have you gotten to the fucking? Is it a spoiler? I don't even know if it's a spoiler to give a type. Just say it. Just go for it. The, the fucking... Here, let me put my fo- uh, hands up. When the hand goes down, the spoiler's gone. All right? Three, two, one. You had your time. All right. Have uh-huh. you gotten to the kangaroo types? Yes. 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 Aren't those fucking cool? They are really cool. They're so fucking cool. I uh, love fighting the kangaroos. We, we haven't really experienced many machines yet, but if they're on that level of quality, I'll be very satisfied by the Oh, dude, it. and the big ones? Oh, the new big ones are great. I can't wait to fight more snakes. Yeah, I know. I'm cool. excited for these moments. That wasn't even a full strength one. That was yeah. That was when I was hurt. Imagine three of those, because you know they're gonna do it. Uh-huh. Have you fought a thunder jaw yet? No, I have not. Oh, I tried to. Oh, oh, it fucked me up. Thunder jaws, man. They <laughs> uh, kick your ass. Anyways, back to back to the thing. But you know, again, like I like building out the character. The I like building out my arsenal. I like getting the upgrades. I like playing around with the systems here. I think the systems of the gameplay are very good. And I stand around and talk to NPCs for 20 minutes, and I don't really care about what they have to say. Sometimes. But other times, it's dope. And that's where I think The Witcher 3 uh, inspirations come into, come into uh, con- the conversation here. Uh, the side quests are pretty well built out. Mm-hmm. It's not your usual go collect things or go kill monsters, though those are still there. But there, there's narrative weight based uh, put on those, much like The Witcher 3 did. Like, there, there's a whole... In the very first town you unlock once you actually get to the open world, there's a whole narrative about this person in charge who maybe shouldn't be in charge. And there are three different side quest chains that all eventually come together into one. And I I was gripped the entire time. They kept saying, hey, man, this guy's an asshole. And I was like, man, you got – this guy is an asshole. We should do something about it. Yeah. And, you know, and it just – it these three chains built into one in one really cool way. And I was like, you know what? That's cool. I'm going to remember that more than I'm going to remember chasing silence across the Forbidden West because he has a computer, I think. Mm-hmm. He, uh, you know, like, immediately, like, I'm losing the thread already. Except for that twisty twist. I'm very excited about uh-huh. the twisty twist. Anyways. Um, huh. But, yeah. To shed some, some, some more positive light here. The game is beautiful. It's a gorgeous game. Lighting. Textures. You mentioned the, the the facial animations are much better than they used to be. They got dinged real hard in the last game for that. Uh, the voice acting across the board is improved. Not where I would personally like it, but, you know, whatever. Um, Aloy's hair bothers me. It's overly animated. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And I wish it would relax and calm down. It's not, why, why is it shaking so much? Look at how much it's shaking. And, it, it, like, it like her whole, like, fucking thing went over her shoulder there. Why? You know how much effort that takes? The, 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 she was just walking. It doesn't, you know? Anyways. Um, Overall, it, it it's hard. It, it, the reason it's so much more difficult to 
splurge about the great things that this game does mm-hmm. is because it's so similar to the last yeah. one in the positives. Yeah. That are they're, they're, the positives are generally improved, but they're still you can't. You, I don't feel inflamed with passion about I, this game. I as was. I, otherwise I was. Might have. I was ready for a game to take Gorilla and put it in that S tier echelon. Mm-hmm. You know that that some of Sony's other studios are there, and this isn't the game to do that. This is still Gorilla, still great. Love Gorilla Games. Still, they put out a quality product here, and this is something that like I'm gonna enjoy and continue to love and and praise as a as a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, but when when we're sitting down and talking about this specific game objectively, my mind first reaches to the things that I wish were done better. Yeah, you know, and I don't have these complaints when it comes to God of War. I don't have these complaints when it comes to Spider Man. I I don't have these complaints when it comes to uh uh anything naughty dog has done in the last six years um i do but i have these complaints with this game and and, you know i had similar complaints to ghost of tsushima but i didn't have as many complaints Mm -hmm. um and to be fair with zero dawn i felt the same way as i felt about ghost where i was like this is great sure there's issues but we'll move past it and again i'll say if ghost 2 comes out and those issues still persist or they're not as improved as they should be i'm gonna harp on it just as harshly and maybe it's just the 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 pain of just making an open world game that they just can't be that fluid. But God of War is an open ass fucking game, mm-hmm. and yeah, the climbing in that game sucks. But it like it's effective and it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. There's a lot of climbing in this game. You might be getting this. I don't know how much long this is gonna, review is going to go on, but you might be getting the spoiler areas of the game. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, avoid that. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll just we'll just refo- yeah, yeah, we're back at the fucking house. Cool. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. This is a good catch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a great moment, by the way. This is yeah. a fantastic moment. You know, when you, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when you get to that moment, it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, Connor, anything else that we, that we have to say about Horizon Forbidden West here? I'm struggling. I, we, we really touched on all the negatives, which are minor. And we touched on what yeah. made the game good and why it's kept being good. Well, let's talk about the, the, we haven't really talked about the side activities. And granted, I haven't done a whole lot of them, but the ones I have done, I've enjoyed a lot. The, there's the one that we just looked at. Uh, earlier where you're putting the the you're finding the the image you're given a picture and you have to find that picture in the environment i think that's a really cool environmental puzzle thing um there's a lot of other smaller side stuff that i think are fun and engaging and build out your um your uh um sort of like what you can craft and so forth even more let me pull up the uh the strike have you played any strike Oh yes, yes. Completely forgot about that. I, yeah, I, I enjoyed that mini game a lot. So Strike is sort of like it, it, it's Horizon trying to find their version of Gwent, is what it is, and th- they've done it by doing sort of like it's almost like a like what? How would you describe this game? Like a weird chess. It's like yeah, it's like a checks chess checkerboard thing. It. I'm sure there are um, uh, tabletop games that this is just directly aping, but like. I just can't think of it right now. And it's like you're like collecting pieces and these pieces have, you know, different move sets and they can move so many squares and yeah. they can attack from so far away and they're machines in the world. They're based off Yeah, that. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I enjoy this a lot. I ju- I I'm I'm going to I'm gotten to the point where when I find one I only found one other player past the tutorial one yeah. that you meet in one of the first areas, but I plan to play every single person all the way every single time I you know, find them because they're uh, fun. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot myself. And sort of like, like you spend the, these early parts, like setting you, up your board. You know, you pick the pieces that you're bringing into into quote unquote battle with, and you set up your board, and you kind of strategize from there. Um, it's kind of difficult sometimes. Yeah, like I've lost mm-hmm. several times, which I, it, as much as I loved Gwent, I can count on one hand the number of times I lost in Gwent. You yeah, know? yeah. Um. But this, it's like, oh, like, you have to earn your stripes in this game. You use, stra- like, strategy is involved. Yeah, yeah. And, but it's like, at the same part, like, it's almost hard to predict what's going to happen. Because you're sitting there, you're like, there's so much freedom in movement in this game. Uh-huh. And the, the battle arena is so small to where, like, sometimes it's like, oh, I think this is a smart move. And then the the enemy player does their move, and I go, oh, shit, this is not a good move. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I know, mistake. I know. The computers are done very well. They They become very good it's the correct yeah the ai the the difficulty i think it's i think it's it might be like a touch more difficult than i would like it to be just a touch though but like it's satisfying when i win Mm -hmm. i i feel smart when i win yeah a cool aspect of the game which is obviously like one of the core uh, parts of it is it's terrain based so your units will do different kinds of effects sometimes negative ones but i think only positive positive ones from what i've found so far 
uh, from being on certain types of terrain. And they, have types they make as well. a they make a note in the tutorialization that some terrains affect different yeah, types yeah. differently. I think flying types in swamp terrains. I haven't got a flying type and i haven't seen a swap terrain. Uh-huh. uh but i think they mentioned flying in swamps uh uh they don't go well together okay yeah but it's all like it's all like it's plus one minus one type stuff where like if you're on a higher if you're on a high ground you're gonna have plus one damage or if you if you have a type that excels on a specific piece of high ground put that on them and it's plus two damage or yep. something like that and then also machines have strong points that are armored and you know hitting them you're not going to get any uh, extra damage and then you have weak points, which if you hit those, then yeah. you're going to do more damage. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's good. good. I like it. And I, I like building out my uh, my deck, and I like building out, like, all I've got. And you can, like, you know, you're moving pieces around and stuff, and you're just yeah. whipping out. It's, it feels good. I like yeah. it. The board's done very well because, like, the computers that you fi- uh, face individually have their own board that you play on. So it's not like the building part of that doesn't get in the way. So you're just focusing on the pieces and what they do and adapting to the this player's board. And you get a reward if you win. So it's it's, it's very good mini game. Yeah, I I'm, very, very I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm going to continue playing it as I as I discover new yeah. uh, boards and places uh, in the open world. Um, man, I wish there was a way we could come off more positive because I really do actually like this game. Like like you know it's 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 I don't think it's knocked Sifu off my game of the year mm-hmm. so far, but it's it's in that conversation. Yeah. Like I, it's gonna be it's gonna be high on my list by the end of the year. It it just will be. Um, Unless just a bunch of games that I don't know about come out and like uh-huh. blow my blow my hair back. Hey, you know? end of year can come with anything. You know, we'll see. Um, Connor, do you have anything else that you've wanted to mention while we're talking about Horizon Forbidden West here? Not really. I'm just I'll, I'll play it and I'll enjoy the rest of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, the fidelity of the game in its combat is like I can't sing its praises enough. It still feels great. It's exactly what you had from Zero Dawn, but just expanded upon a little more. Uh, the upgrade trees are great. I like the crafting. I do yeah. like the craft. I feel good when I'm putting in my upgrades and gathering my resources and putting them into my armors. There's and, payoff. Uh, uh, applying the the like the uh, like the bonus. What do they call them? Weaves. Coils? Oh, the the weaves or the the coils for the weapons. Coils. Is yeah. that what? Okay. Yeah. The the coils for the weapons and for the armors. I like putting on those. Um, weaves for the armor. <laughs> do you also just shoot everything in sight? Like every anytime you see just wildlife. Do you also just immediately zero in on it? Until I'm for certain that I don't really need, uh, at that time at least, any material from boars, I'm just like, okay, I won't do any more squirrels, raccoon, raccoons. I'm like, oh, yeah, see, for it. me, foxes, I'm like, I don't know if I need to shoot any more yeah. foxes. You know? hear less uh, little screeching noises. So that's yeah. good that I don't have to shoot them anymore. I remember being on stream, and uh, I was just running around, and I was just talking, and then uh, uh, there was a fox like right in front of me, and I just very quickly drew back my bow and just fucking popped it right in the head. And somebody who had just hopped into the chat was like, "Oh my god, why?" Dude, and I was like, "No, you don't understand. You need it for supplies." <laughs> yeah, feel brutal doing it, but yeah, you oh, it do feels it. nasty, but mm-hmm. it's great. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is sort of our review in progress or review. You know, twenty hours in uh, to Horizon Forbidden West. We we are enjoying it. We do like it a lot. It is a really really good game. There's just a lot holding it back from being uh, the game we want it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, you can find and absolutely worth your sixty dollars seventy. I don't know how much this game is worth. Uh, seventy dollar purchase, absolutely. Like people should play this game. Yes, no. Yeah, I, I think people should play this game. Yeah, the seventy dollar price hike. I've never been a fan of it. So like, if you're like angry about that and you're like. You want okay, you want go buy, go buy go I buy your sixty dollar PS4 version then, which yeah. apparently the PS4 version is running very well. We both played on PS5s, yeah, um, and it's fantastic. It's, you know, sixty FPS, mm-hmm. so so good, so good. I can't imagine trying to play this game in thirty. Oh my god, the pain, mm-hmm. the pain. Mm-hmm. I can't even. Ugh, ugh. I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, but no, Horizon Forbidden West, solid like one and a half thumbs up. You know, yeah. not to put ratings because we don't do ratings here, but you know, it's a good time. It's a good time. Enjoying it a lot. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for your two Penny Games cast review of Horizon Forbidden West. Remember, you can watch us play games live over at twitch.tv slash two penny games and uh, catch the podcast, you know, see what else we've been playing and all that over at youtube.com slash two penny games cast or mainstream podcast services of your choice every Monday at 8 a.m. Central Time. Next week, keep an eye out. We will be reviewing Elden Ring. It'll be probably pretty similar where. I imagine you'll be further than I will be. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing it tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to load it up when I have time tonight, but i got to do some work. Uh. Uh, 
but yeah, uh, I, I, we'll, we'll see how we feel about Elden Ring. I'm only a few hours in, but we'll yeah. see. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it. Uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and until next time, have a great time. And Connor, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye.